Okay, we're going to look at the demonstration where we pour laser light a little bit more closely by looking at the diagram that I've drawn on the page. Now on the right hand side you see I've drawn a laser. I haven't drawn the laser beam yet. We can assume the laser's off. But it's going to pass through this glass tank that's filled with water. Now the index of refraction of water is 1.33. This is going to be our starting side. Our laser is going to start inside the water and cross a boundary and try and get out into air, try and escape into air. So our incident side is water, our refracted side is going to be air eventually. Now what happens is we're going to turn the laser on, the beam's going to hit the glass straight on so it's not going to bend, it's going to travel straight through all the way to the other side where we're going to punch a hole in the tank. The water's going to pour out in a parabolic arc according to kinematics. So I'm going to draw that now. I'm going to exaggerate the thickness of the arc so we can really see what's going on, and then we'll look at the math. So you can see that I've punched a hole in the tank, allowing the water to escape, and it spews out in this parabolic arc traveling to the ground. I've made the, the path or the tube of water fairly thick so we can see what's going on. So the next step now is to turn on the laser beam and watch it as it tries to refract from water into air. So I'll turn on the laser beam and we'll follow its path all the way to the first sort of key point. Okay, so we can see that my laser beam basically passes straight through the first interface because the angle of incidence is zero degrees. Remember we always measure it with respect to the normal. And if it's coming straight on to an interface it just passes straight through. So it keeps traveling, straight line, straight line, straight line, until it gets to the next interface between the air and the water. So it's originating in water, it's in the water right now, and it's trying to escape to air. So right where my hand is, is our incoming angle, our angle of incidence. Now we always measure with respect to a normal line that's 90 degrees to that point, right where the laser beam hits. I'll sketch that in now. Okay, so we can see that we've drawn my light to this normal line. My normal line is 90 degrees to the surface of the water at that point. My angle of incidence is labeled I. Now we have two choices when we go from a slow medium into a fast medium. We have the choice where it actually escapes and refracts, or the choice where it hits the surface and no longer refracts but is reflected back into the same side, into the same water medium. Now if I sketch the laser light as if there's no medium whatsoever, it'll just continue straight. But we know that it's going to go from a slow medium, the water, into air, so it's going to refract. And we should know by now that when it refracts from a slow medium into a fast, it should bend away from the normal, like this. Now the maximum possible bend that it can have is such that it's 90 degrees to the actual normal line as I've drawn here. Anything beyond that, any angle that's bigger than that, will be reflected on itself and that's called the critical angle. So we have to first of all determine what is this critical angle and then decide whether it's going to be refracted or reflected. Anything bigger than the critical angle it will reflect, anything smaller it will refract. So to calculate the critical angle is pretty simple. We just use Snell's law and we're trying to find the angle of incidence such that the angle of refraction is 90 degrees. So let's write down Snell's law and proceed. Now the left hand side of our equation is our incident side where the laser is originating from right where it hits this boundary. So this is the water side. All the data on this side will have to do with water. The uh, index of refraction for water is 1.33 while the index of refraction for the refracted side, the air side, is 1.0. So left hand side is water, right hand side is air. Let's proceed. Now I'm going to emphasize this one more time. We're trying to find the critical angle and the critical angle is the angle of incidence such that we're at the maximum possible refracted angle. So it becomes pretty simple. The maximum possible refracted angle is always 90 degrees. That's what we're going to put in for R up top. Now if you'll recall sine of 90 degrees is just 1 and 1 times 1 is 1. So really my equation becomes simply 1.33 sine i equals 1. Isolating for sine i, I divide both sides by 1.33 and I get sine i is 1 over 1.33. The only thing left to do is to actually solve for the angle and if you recall you just go inverse sine. So if I go inverse sine of 1 over 1.33 I get my critical angle to be 48.8 degrees. 
That means any angle of incidence bigger than 48.8 will no longer be refracted but will be reflected. Any angle less than 48.8 will actually escape the medium as I've drawn here. Now if I look at my diagram, it appears as though this angle is actually quite large. You can imagine the 45 degrees splitting it right down the middle. This is clearly going to be bigger than probably 48.8, probably bigger than 50 or 60 degrees. So in the case that I've drawn here, this is going to be totally internally reflected and what will happen is this refracted beam that I've drawn will actually simply bounce off according to our normal rules of reflection where the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection until it hits the next section. And if we look at the next section it'll also be bigger than 48.8 degrees and it'll bounce just as if it's a mirrored surface at that point as well. And it'll just keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing following that tube of water all the way along. Total internal reflection.